Greetings, First English family and friends. Welcome to Tuesday, February 14th. It's Valentine's Day, 2023, and I'll check the temperature right here. It's 38 degrees here at the house, cloudy, and we're supposed to be getting some rain coming through later today. So, uh, so yeah, that'll take care of quite a bit of the snow. Check-in time, how are you all doing? Hope and pray that you are healthy and safe and well. Leave a comment or a question below if you have one. Check my coffee here in my Thoughts of dog, good morning cup. So good morning, everybody, and cheers, church. Mm. The uh, toaster oven's going off. <laughs> Breakfast is ready, almost. But we got to get through this first, right? Uh, Devo today comes from The Word in Season, and uh, Pastor Gene Bradbury from Squim, Washington, is our writer. And the scripture reading is James 2, 1 to 13. James 2, 1 to 13. And before we get into that too far, too much farther, this is the devotion that we'll be using for the Lent season, Water and Spirit. These are available at First English in these little books and also large print. Also, if, uh, so anybody in the Wassa area, if you, Wassa area, if you want to stop by and pick one up. Um, also available through Augsburg Fortress Publishing House. You can, Augsburg, augsburgfortress.org, you can get a copy of this. So that's what we'll be using starting Ash Wednesday. So James 2, 1 to 13. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions amongst, among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my brothers and sisters, my beloved brothers and sisters, has God not chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But if you have dishonored the poor, I'm sorry, but you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged. I'm sorry, I'll start that again. Verse 12. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. There we go. Been a theme lately in the scripture readings and Sunday mornings and on the uh, in these devos about not judging others and loving others. That's pretty much the gospel right there, right? So, word and season title is "It Ought Not Be So," and the theme verse is verse nine. But if you show partiality, you commit sin. James echoes the apostle Paul, who wrote to the Romans, "God knows." God shows no partiality, Romans 2.11. Favoritism had become a problem in the early church. When the wealthy were honored over the poor, James let them know that such behavior was wrong among the followers of Jesus. Wealth, status, and politics can cause division in our day as well. It must not be so. We too are, not, we, we too are called not to favor those with wealth and status. The story is told of an acolyte who sees a mouse scurry across the floor. In his mind, he hears the mouse say, I am more than a mouse, you know. The voice comes again when he imagines an elderly lady say, I am more than an old lady, you know. We are all more than we seem. When a pastor's wife received a call from a teenager, she heard, this is just Sam. There is no such thing as just Sam, she answered. You are a child of God. We are all more than we know. Hmm. I like that part about uh, 
Oh, it's just me. It's not just you. You are you. You are a beloved child of God. And, uh, yeah, we diminish ourselves sometimes. And there's a difference between humiliate, humbleness and humiliation. Uh, we don't want to humiliate ourselves, but we do want to be humble. And, and to acknowledge that we are a beloved child of God. We are not just Eric and not just Sam and not just, but we are, we are, uh, we are beloved children of God. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and to realize in our daily lives and recognize in our daily lives how, where and how we judge others and how we treat others. And do we treat other people special because they're, they're more well-to-do or have more clout or more power or more status? Um, do we do that and recognize that? And, and how do we change that and treat everybody as, as best we can equally, right? That's a challenge. That's the challenge set before us each day. So, but we can do it. We recognize it and, uh, and work to be better, right? Be of strong heart and good courage to stay to your church. Keep yourself safe and healthy and well. Wash your hands and mask and distance as appropriate. All that good stuff to keep yourselves and each other safe. Uh, we do, the, do these things to show love to our neighbor and share the light of Christ. Let's pray. Forgive us, O oh God, when we do not value our neighbors. Amen. Blessings upon you. Peace.